From the collapse of a two-story viaduct in California, to the stunning failure of a 3,600-foot bridge in Italy, and so much more. Here are the five biggest bridge failures in all history. October 17, 1989 began as a great day for a baseball game. The sun beat down over California as the Oakland Athletics prepared to play the San Francisco Giants. It was the Battle of the Bay, and every baseball fan in the country tuned in to see who'd win. Players warmed up on the field as highlights from the previous game played on TV. That's when the whole country watched a 6.9 magnitude earthquake shake the stadium and cancel the game. Elsewhere in Oakland, drivers hurried home to catch the opening pitch. They pulled onto the Cypress Street Viaduct, a two-deck, multi-lane freeway hoping to beat the rush hour traffic. The earthquake struck at 5.05 p.m., about 30 minutes before the opening pitch, and the ground shook beneath the bridge, causing the catastrophic collapse of the Cypress Street Viaduct. The viaduct's top deck was reserved for southbound traffic into Oakland, while the lower deck was used for northbound traffic towards the highway in San Francisco. Two support columns on either side held some bridge sections in place. Others relied on a single support column. But the bay's clay and soil underneath the bridge were highly susceptible to seismic activity, meaning the Cypress Street Viaduct didn't stand a chance. Sadly, 42 people lost their lives in the bridge collapse. But many believe the death toll could have been much higher if not for the World Series game. The ball game was a big deal in the Bay Area, and many people left work early to get home in time. About 195,000 cars would drive north and south across the bridge on a typical day. You can imagine how busy it gets during rush hour traffic. There was no rebuilding of the viaduct after the quake, and Oakland tore the rest down. Though, you can still visit the Cypress Freeway Memorial Park at 14th and Mandela Parkway, built in memory of those lost during the earthquake. As for the World Series, the Athletics swept the Giants in four games. The Ponte Morandi was a 3,600-foot bridge in Genoa, Italy, connecting the San Pierdorina and Cornigliano districts across the Polcevera Valley. Construction began in the early 1960s, based on plans drawn up by Riccardo Morandi, an Italian engineer after whom the bridge was named. Its signature elements were three A-frame towers rising almost 300 feet above the ground. Twelve stays, or support beams, connected the towers to the roadway. It became known as one of Italy's most important bridges, and even President Giuseppe Saragat was there when it opened on September 4th of 1967. But the bridge underwent constant maintenance work through the 1970s, becoming a serious money pit for Italy. While truly beautiful, engineers realized the bridge had too few crucial support mechanisms. If one failed, the whole thing would likely fall. For the next 50 years, the Ponte Morandi Bridge was the subject of heated debate regarding repair and restoration. Even Morandi himself said the bridge needed work. Then, just before its 51st birthday, disaster struck. During a torrential rainstorm on August 14th of 2018, a 690-foot section of the bridge collapsed after the southern stays broke. The road under the A-frame tilted as the full weight was transferred to the northern stays. But those collapsed moments later, and the entire structure came crumbling down, taking 35 cars and three trucks with it. The Morandi Collapse claimed 43 lives, and the Liguria region of Italy entered into a year-long state of emergency. The collapse put most of Europe on notice, as several studies cited the corroded state of bridges in Italy, France, and Germany. After the 2008 financial crisis, the Italian government reduced investments in infrastructure, perhaps sacrificing bridge repairs to save money. A 37-year-old truck driver named Luigi was the next car to go over the bridge before it collapsed. He slammed on the brakes to avoid certain death and ran back across to safety. His blue and green Basco truck sat there for days, becoming a symbol for the entire ordeal. The Mississippi River flows over 2,300 miles from a glacial lake in northern Minnesota to Louisiana and the Gulf of Mexico. 
At least 130 bridges cross the river along the journey, not counting those currently under construction or in disrepair. But one bridge, the I-35 Mississippi River Bridge in Minneapolis, Minnesota, made headlines after a catastrophic failure in 2007. Also known as Bridge 9430, this eight-lane steel bridge carried Interstate 35 West across the Mississippi River, about a half mile downstream from St. Anthony Falls, also known as the only natural waterfall on the Mississippi River. It opened in 1967 and was the third busiest bridge in the state, carrying about 140,000 vehicles every day and connecting the Bohemian Flats District to Marcy Homes, the oldest neighborhood in the city. On August 1st of 2007, the Mississippi River Bridge suffered a catastrophic failure as rush hour traffic crawled through a handful of open lanes. Workers had begun some light maintenance a few weeks prior and were on the bridge when it fell. The structure and deck collapsed into the river, dragging 111 vehicles and 18 workers with it. Some fell 115 feet into the water or onto the banks. Minnesota declared a state of emergency, and rescue workers deployed on the scene. Fire departments arrived six minutes after the collapse, and many civilians helped trapped drivers get out of their cars. Sadly, it was too late for some. 13 people lost their lives in the collapse, and 50 others were taken to nearby hospitals. A school bus carrying 63 children rested precariously near the guardrail by the edge of a collapsed section. You see, the bridge didn't just fall into the water. Some areas collapsed only a few dozen feet onto the roads below. The section that did fall in the water was big enough to stick out, and the cars that remained on top didn't sink. The collapse was ultimately blamed on a design flaw and the 262 tons of construction equipment, cars, and sand sitting on the bridge's weakest point. Investigators discovered several fragile gusset plates, which also played a hand. There was a time when the Sunshine Skyway Bridge connecting St. Petersburg and Tampa, Florida was the longest bridge in the United States. Today, the Sunshine Skyway is dwarfed by structures like the Manshack Swamp Bridge, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, and the Jubilee Parkway. But none of those bridges have ever suffered a catastrophic failure. And while that's nothing to write home about, it still cements the Sunshine Skyway in the history books. People have been trying to build a bridge over Tampa Bay since the 1920s, now that more and more people were casually driving cars. But the Great Depression and both world wars prevented any progress. Then, in the 1950s, construction began on the Four Mile Bridge. It officially opened for traffic on September 6, 1954. At four miles, it was one of the longest bridges in the world and the longest bridge in America. In 1971, to ease traffic, they built a sister bridge to carry southbound traffic. The original bridge was dedicated to northbound traffic. It operated without notable incidents for nine more years. Then, the 80s happened. On May 9th of 1980, the perfect wind and rainstorm hit Tampa Bay. Winds blew at 60 miles per hour, and punishing rain created near zero visibility. A 606-foot, 19,000-ton freighter called the Summit Venture crashed into a support column on the southbound sister bridge. 1,200 feet of concrete fell 150 feet into Tampa Bay, taking six cars, a pickup truck, and a Greyhound bus with it. 35 people lost their lives, 26 of which were on the bus. The only survivor was the pickup truck driver, who bounced off the Summit Venture before landing in the water. His truck didn't sink immediately, and he could climb through the window. Sailors on the Summit Venture pulled him to safety. He sued the shipping company and won a $175,000 settlement, or about a half million in today's money. What's worse than one catastrophic bridge failure? How about two catastrophic bridge failures? The Quebec Bridge stands strong today, providing a three-lane highway over the St. Lawrence River to connect Levy and Quebec City. But the same can't be said for its previous iterations in 1907 and 1916. Before 1919, when the Quebec Bridge finally opened, the only way to cross the St. Lawrence River was to take the ferry. That, or you could wait for the Winter Ice Bridge. 
As part of the Transcontinental Railway project, Canada began discussing a bridge over the St. Lawrence in 1887. Construction got underway by 1904, with the southern portion humming along. But something was wrong. The bridge itself was too heavy. It'd never support the weight it was built to carry. Of course, you couldn't just call someone and tell them there's something wrong. Engineers relied on telegraphs, letters, and word of mouth to spread the word. Stop building the bridge. But it was too late. In 1907, after four years of work, the southern portion collapsed into the St. Lawrence River in 15 seconds. 75 workers lost their lives in the collapse, most of them Mohawk steel workers. They redesigned an even bigger bridge in 1916, and construction made it a little further this time. They built both ends, but needed to raise and connect the middle section. On September 11th of 1916, the central piece collapsed as workers raised it into position. The collapse dragged 13 workers down into the river and to their death. At first, they feared German sabotage as the First World War raged in Europe. But that theory was quickly debunked in favor of basic human error. The Quebec Bridge finally opened for rail traffic in 1919. 23 million dollars and 88 lives later. To see another video just like this one, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thank you all for watching and be sure to tune in next time.